Hey, man, guys, let's get up for the song leaders one more time. Uh, Merry Christmas, guys. Hope we're all excited for the holiday season. Uh, you know, I love Christmas. And uh, particularly, I love Christmas movies. And, you know, you got the classic ones. You got Home Alone. It's fantastic. Uh, the Christmas Story, which I've probably seen like a hundred times. And then uh, my mom, she likes the Tyler Perry Christmas movies. Which, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of because it's the same movie all the time, but, you know, amen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite ones that we actually as a family have a tradition that we watch every single year. It's a really old movie. It's called The Sound of Music. And, and uh, it's not particularly like a Christmas movie, but they always, I mean, okay, I'm sorry, it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But they, they, they always show it uh, during Christmas, and it's a super long movie, and it's a musical. And, uh, you know, we have the, fa the famous ones, like a few of my favorite things, and uh, great songs over there. We watch it every year. Uh, but one of the most classic ones that's now a movie, but it was originally a novella, not a telenovela, but a novella, which is a short novel written by Charles Dickens, who we know for his writings of Great Expectations. Uh, he wrote a novella called A Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. And uh, this has now become a, had many re of it. And the main character is called Ebenezer Scrooge, who maybe may, many of us have heard about him before. And the way the movie goes, it shows Ebenezer, the man was a down and out guy. So rich, so very rich, but very money hungry. And he was angry all the time. And funny enough, there was a biography about Charles Dickens later on, and we later on figure out that Charles Dickens was very much like Ebenezer Scrooge, a rich, down-and-out, angry guy. Now, the way the novella goes, which was written in 1843, there is three ghosts that come to Ebenezer Scrooge in one night. Yeah, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future. And these ghosts come to him and they show him, the past that he shows him, why he's such a bad guy now. To see all that happened, all the, the terrible things that happened in his childhood. And then the present showed him how bad he is right now. And then the future showed him, if you do not change, what's going to happen in your life? And it was nothing but destruction. And praise God, in the, in the novella he does repent and does change. But, you know, I thought today we could talk about a true kiss Christmas carol. And that's the title of my lesson here this morning, A True Christmas Carol. And we're not going to just talk about some regular old ghost here this morning. It does say in John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you things and remind you of everything I've said to you. And we know in the King James Version, the Holy Spirit's called the Holy Ghost. So I thought today we could talk about the Holy Ghost of Christmas past, the Holy Ghost of Christmas present, and the Holy Ghost of Christmas future. And those are my three points for you this morning. Let's let the Holy Ghost teach us how to have a Merry Christmas. Let's talk about point number one. The Holy Ghost of Christmas past. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. Let's talk about Jesus' great, 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 great grandfather, David. You know, I've been setting out Samuel for my quiet times, and I thought it would be fitting for a point to read about David and Goliath. Now, we know that Saul is anointed the first king of Israel. But at some point, God rejects Saul and regrets making him king because of his lack of accepting the call of God. Then David gets anointed, and we see a sharp difference between David and Saul, especially right here in the character of David during this time when Goliath is coming and taunting the Israelites. We know Goliath was a giant, nine feet tall. And, you know, maybe some people have some Goliath gene in them, like Femi over there. And congratulations to the Bruins as they did win their, their bowl game over there yesterday. That's awesome. But can you imagine, nine feet tall, 40 straight days is taunting the people of God. And no one 
has any inclination to do anything about it. But then here comes King David, who goes, and we pick it up in 1 Samuel 17, in verse 32. David said to Saul, verse 32, 1 Samuel 17, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he's defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear would rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Man, you see the amazing godly confidence in David, where we understand that the scene is Goliath, nine feet tall, 40 straight days, taunting God's people. And all the Israelites are in the back, frightened, scared, don't want to fight. Here comes the shepherd boy, David. Come and has the confidence of God, but what brought him that confidence? He said while he was a shepherd, lions and bears, this is gnarly, this is crazy. Like, lions and bears. This dude killed lions and bears. That's a bad dude. And he said, God rescued me from those lions and bears. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. That uncircumcised Philistine will be just like them. David looked at God's past miracles to give him the faith to fight the present things in his life. He looked at what God did. He said, man, God, he he slayed the bear. He was with me. He slayed the lion. He was with me. And he is going to be with me in Goliath. It's the same conviction we got to have as disciples. To look at 2023 of the past, the ghost, the Holy Ghost of Christmas past. To see all that God has done and look at those miracles. And then have a conviction that when Goliath comes in 2024, remember the bear. Remember the lion. And you too can be like David and have that confidence. The difference between him and the other Israelites who did not want to fight is that the Israelites who did not want to fight forgot the miracles of God. Psalm 78 verse 11. You have to turn there, but the Bible says the men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. For they forgot what God has done. The wonders he had shown them, he did miracles in their sight. We know that God has a present battle for us. We believe that right now, although many people are, you know, celebrating a Merry Christmas, we understand that outside these walls, there is a spiritual battle happening. And there are spiritual Goliaths that want to take every single one of us out. And if we forget the Holy God, the Holy Ghost, the amazing Lord that has done incredible things in 2023, we could be just like these men and stop fighting. Because we know if we stop fighting, as Revelation says, a faithful disciple is faithfully preaching the word of God. We don't fight like the way the world does. And we're no longer a physically violent kingdom. Now we're a spiritually violent kingdom. And our stone that we're going to hit with those Goliaths over there is the stone right here, the the word, the Bible. And we have to fight that way. But the only way we're going to do that is to never forget. You know, I I preached this same title, but it's a totally different lesson, uh, last year. Right over here in December, Christmas Eve. It was... Our very first service with the Southland. And the West had their own service, so it was just the Southland region. And I remember coming here, and the first person I met was James over there, Jaime over there. 
And he gave me a warm hug, and I, and I came up, and honestly, the, the service, to be honest, was, was, it, was the zeal was very low that day. <laughs> it was a hard service. <laughs> but I came up with, I'm, I'm going to give it my best. And that same day, that's when TJ was baptized into Christ. And I believe right now, we got to look at the Holy Ghost of Christmas past and see what God has done. To put it in perspective, and hopefully it gives you some faith. In 2022, in the Southland, there was negative 18% growth. And in the West, negative 1.52% growth. But the Holy Ghost, in December 15th of 2022, sent out almost 90 disciples from San Francisco and Denver to come on Operation Jerusalem. And Friday was the one-year anniversary when we all landed. And out of those almost 90, the Southland, we, we received 13 members, and the West had 15. A total of 28 people came to the Metro Coast. Think about 28 people coming to regions of hundreds. And after today, in 2023, the West would have had 37 baptisms and six restorations. And the Southland would have had, after today, with the baptism of Melody and Carlos and Dario, we would have seen 72 baptisms and four restorations. And in one year's time, the Metro Coast have gone from 130 disciples to over 220 sold out disciples for Jesus Christ. Let's look at the Holy Ghost of Christmas past and see what God has done. It's truly been a year of miracles. God has brought life into this group. And we have to give God all the glory for it. And we think about these numbers. These numbers are not just numbers. People persecute us on all about numbers because these numbers represent souls. I remember the first soul when, when we came on the mission team. We didn't even unpack. I, I appreciate the sisters. They unpacked our stuff. I appreciate Walter. He came and built my bed for me. As soon as we came, I went to go, do a light and darkness study that night with Eric Basio. And Eric Basio was the last baptist in 2022, and he got baptized last year. And now Eric Basio disciples three people in the Lord. Yeah. A, 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 addition number three in the West, she's out of town right now, but it was Laura. Yeah. Laura was baptized. Now she disciples two people in the Lord. Yeah. Addition number 22, he's at Kids Kingdom right now serving, but that was Odera. He got baptized. Now he disciples two people now. And addition number nine in the West was Nick. Now Nick disciples someone and his father was baptized in Christ in the central region. Don't forget the miracles. Sometimes we get so down about the things that didn't happen. Look at our goal sheet. Look at all the things that didn't happen. What about the things that happened? Be like David. Well, I, I love Christmas music too. Not, 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 just, not, not just the movies. And I, I, I don't know, I like the more unorthodox ones, you know? There's one from John Lennon called War is Over. It's a Christmas song. Yeah, it doesn't sound like one, but it is. And in the beginning lyric, he says, So this is Christmas. And what have you done? Another year over, a new one just begun. And I was listening to it. This is one of my favorite songs. Listen, man, that's a sobering lyric. What have you done? Because we can look at all the miracles and all the fire, but then have an inward reflection and not feel on fire ourselves. You could be around the fire, but it doesn't mean you're on fire. And maybe some of us here, although we see all these miracles, we can feel like the Grinch a little bit. My favorite edition of that is Jim Carrey's one. 
where we can feel a little bit down. And people are happy. You're trying to, like, why are you happy? It was a tough year. No, it was the year of miracles. We slayed the lion. We slayed the bear. And God's going to do even greater things in 2024. Are you guys with me? I want to challenge us. Are you like David or like those Israelites? Are you watching or are you fighting? Are you a contender or are you a pretender? Because we know you're going to answer the call. We're either going to be a fighter or a whiner. It's time for us to be like, David. Man, it's okay. Maybe you feel a little weak today. I know it's been hard. It is. 10, 23, with great miracles comes great suffering. Now, though maybe you feel a little weak today. Or maybe you've been slaying the Bible and been delaying getting your life right with God. Or maybe you know you got to get restored and you've been waiting and you feel weak. Zechariah 12. You have to turn there. But in verse 8. It says on that day, I hope this, that day is this day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem. And it's great to be in the Jerusalem church. So that the feeblest among them, the feeblest among them will be like David. And the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. It's amazing this passage what it says. That says the feeblest among you, the weakest among us, can be like David. What was David? He was a fighter. But then the strong could be like the angel of the Lord. What does the angel of the Lord do? It teaches, it preaches, and it gets other people strong. I want to challenge us. If you feel weak, it's okay. I know this is a time where, although we're celebrating the birth of Christ, we could sometimes go back and look at all the sin and go back to our sin. And sin makes you weak. But what's awesome about being a Christian, when you confess your sin and you renounce your sin, God just doesn't only forgive, but he forgets. And if you're weak, you can be like David and say, I too will fight. Here's a practical here. I believe at times we could go days, weeks, sometimes sadly months without confessing our sin. Afraid. I can say my conviction is very strong in this. I confess my sin every week. Confess it to my disciple, Jason Dimitri. Confess it to my brother, Matt. Because I'd rather, be, I'd rather look like the weakest brother in the church and go to heaven than look like the strongest person and go to hell. I want to challenge us here this morning. If you have any unconfessed, even if you confess, like write a sin list of the year and confess it to your disciple and confess it to your brothers and sisters that are close to you so we can wipe the years clean. Because we know when we confess and renounce, we get that strength. And for those maybe who already feel strong in 2023, that's awesome. Now it's time to become like the angel of the Lord and get others around you strong. And let's learn from the Holy Ghost of Christmas past. Point number two, the Holy Ghost of Christmas present. You know, as one said, the past is history. The future is a mystery. What we have now is the gift of God. That's why it's called the present. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. When I I thought about this, I I couldn't help but think about Mary. And to read from the birth of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2. In verse 8. You know, very famous passage and very famous story. And this is why we're here celebrating Christmas. Luke 2, verse 8, Bible says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause 
great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The ghosts of Christmas present. You know, it's amazing over here, the birth of Christ. Just imagine being there during this time. See those shepherds, they hear that good news, and they're so fired up, they couldn't help but just spread the word. And that's what we do as disciples. When we're so fired, we can't help but share our faith. We can't help but say something. And they go, and they see the angels there, and the angels tell them, don't be afraid, because, you know, angels look scary. And they go, and they see Jesus Christ as a baby. And we understand that, Mary, just consider her, gives birth as a virgin, is told that you're going to give birth to the Son of God. And we believe this 100% that it happened, and that's why we're here this morning. And I love what it says, because we know that Luke was an historian and a doctor. He was not an eyewitness testimony of this happening, or wasn't there during the time when Jesus was walking with the apostles and disciples. But he interviewed people, and most likely interviewed Mary. And Mary told him during this time when she gave birth to Jesus, she treasured it in her heart. Wow. You see, she was present in the present. She savored the moment. I think sometimes we could be such a society that's on to the next thing, wow. on to the next thing, on to the next thing. But not just be grateful for what you have right now. Grateful for you, that you could walk, you could talk, you're here this morning. And we could be so complaining about things instead of being grateful for what God has given us. You know, there's a famous song, Mary, Did You Know? Nah, I don't, I don't sing. Andre, Andre sang it very well last Sunday. And we're going to keep it like that. <laughs> but you know the lyrics. Mary, did you know that your baby boy? would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. It's a powerful song. And the question is, Mary, did you know? And we know that she did know. She did know. She treasured it in her heart. But we do know from our persecution study that Mary forgot at some point. And she thought her son was brainwashed. And how fickle we are as human beings. See miracles. But in the present, forget. And then get down and out and think that there's something wrong with our present situation. Then we start blaming God for it. And the Bible says that's folly. And I believe the challenge from this is to simply be grateful and treasure things in your heart. You know, yesterday, it was was awesome. I was very grateful for yesterday. Yesterday, Virginia and I got two free meals. It was amazing. Um, That's that's encouraging for myself. the, the, the Petersons in the North region invited us, and they made a very delicious meal. But then for lunch, the deeply rooted Bible talk, or the woman of wisdom, they invited us to Yvonne's house, and we had a great time, Brenda's house, and had a great time in the Lord. I mean, it was so awesome. They, they, they had a nice itinerary. We played bingo. We had a Bible trivia, and, you know, amen, I lost, but strong in the grace. 
That's tough. The ministry lost Bible trivia. That means, you know, I don't know everything, you know. <laughs> Got lots to still learn there. But, but, but before we started some of the festivities, we just uh, went around and shared our favorite Christmas memory. And uh, I was impacted by what uh, Lisa Davis said, Auntie Lisa said. She said her favorite Christmas memory is this one today. The fact that she didn't know that when, before she got baptized, she would have a spiritual family. Wow. Now I was thinking about that, like, yeah, it's true. Like her, all of her kids, they're out of the house now, but now she could have spiritual sons and daughters. Wow. And she was so grateful for it. See, she was present and grateful. And I believe right now as we go into the Christmas season, savor the moments. Be grateful. Treasure it in your heart. The challenge is simple. Let's stop complaining. I know for me, this would be a time where I could think, I could think about stuff that didn't go right. I, I don't know. I have a knack of doing that. I just, I, I like to think about things that went wrong. And not things that went right. And you can have a, start to have a complaining heart. Philippians 2 says in verse 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing or complaining. So you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. See, this is a crooked and warped generation that's always complaining. Disciples of Jesus Christ should be the opposite. And the Bible says that we should be like stars shining. That people should look at us, but man, they're always so grateful and happy. That should be our Christmas season. Here's the practical. Write a gratitude list. You know, I was impacted by my wife. Uh, my wife is incredible. Um, I, I don't know where I'd be without my wife. Not in a good place. And Thanksgiving, as a region, we had a challenge to write a gratitude list. And I said, man, find at least 100 things. But Jean took it on it, as you know, a great leader does, to go above and beyond that. And she's keeping a journal of gratitude, things she's grateful for, and now she's at, like, number 300 or something like that. And I was impacted because, like, man, I, I got I to gotta do that as well. I got I to gotta go and be grateful for the things that God has done in my life. Yeah. Let's go after making those gratitude lists so we could be like Mary here and treasure things in our hearts. Our final point, point number three, the Holy Ghost of Christmas future. Let's go back to Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30, in verse 15. Give me, give me an amen once you're there. All right, we're going to wait. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. The Holy Ghost of Christmas future. The Bible says in verse 15. We understand this, these are the words of Moses as he's about to go on a hike to die on a mountain. And he gave his last words to the Israelites during this time. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 30. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed." You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life. It's an amazing passage here. Where Moses goes before the people on the mountain and says, you have two options, blessings or curses, life or death. And he says, you must choose today. And it's amazing to see his heart as he's giving the people an opportunity to get their life right with God. 
And just like Moses, I too want to be a prophet to you this morning and give you the same option. Because I think some of us can maybe be haunted by the Holy Ghost of Christmas past and are, and are dreading 2024. Instead of looking forward to it, we have regrets in 2023. And oh, this scripture teaches that our future can be filled with life or our future can be filled with death. Now, the thing is, I don't know the intricate details of our future. I don't know what's going to happen in 2024, 25, or 26, 27. But what I do know, who holds our future? God, the Alpha and the Omega. God, the beginning and the end. God, the Holy One. He has our future and it's written right here in the scriptures. Only if we obey, we will see his blessings. And that is a fact and a promise on the rock. That if you obey the Lord, you will see his blessings. I think this, I think this passage was, was amazing about it. Is that... I do believe it's sort of a, it's a prophecy. Because we know what happens, Joshua becomes a successor. But then what happens after that, there's no more succession after Joshua. Gives birth to the book of Judges. And then eventually it gets so bad during the king's period, exile. They didn't listen. And what happened was destruction and curses. You see, there's always an if. It's up to us. As we know that this was a time where they're about to cross over the Jordan to the promised land and do something totally brand new. And I believe it's so emblematic of us as well going into 2024. It's something totally brand new. And God is showing us right now that we have an option, that we could allow God to move powerfully. Because at the end of the day, the Bible would show us that the odds are stacked against us. But God loves bad odds. And even though the odds may be stacked against us in 2024, we know that we serve a God that's bigger than those odds. And thank God we serve a God just like that. You know, I believe right now I'm looking at a group of people that could do amazing things for the Lord. That are making decisions to not allow the past to define them but to learn from it and do even greater things and exceed it. You know, it's amazing when you think about it. What can really stop us in 2024? Some may say the dark forces, persecution, Satan. In reality, the only thing that can stop us in 2024 is us. If we're not willing to do anything it takes... To have a no-limits mentality. Man, we got a no-limits mentality in 2023. We did whatever it took to blow our missions. We sold Rice Krispie Treats. To blow our missions, we sold Ding Dongs. To, you know, we, we stayed up late at night and do studies. We did whatever it took. Because we heard the word of the Lord said we're not going to let anything stop us. The only thing that can stop God's people when God is with them is themselves. Who we become in 2024 is going to be based on, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to go through all the things? Because we know that's going to be the year of blessings. But there is no great blessing without great suffering. And we know that God wants to bless the Metro Coast. He wants to bless the City of Angels Church. But we're going to have to be willing to go through whatever it takes. Because we have two options. You get to choose your future. A life to the full or a life full of destruction. Prosperity or apostasy. Heaven or hell. That are the options. But you know what's awesome? Today's a new day. And it doesn't really matter how it went today or this morning. You can make a decision that your life now can be full of purity. Your life can now be full of discipline, of humility and prosperity. And if you're willing to struggle with God and be like the people here, you will overcome. And you will see that blessing. You know, think about Moses. What made Moses a great leader? Well, the Bible says in the book of Numbers that he was the most humble man on the planet Earth. And we know that Philippians 2 says that God made himself humble to become obedient to death. So what does that teach us? 
there is a direct proportionality to be humble and obedience. Meaning the more humble you are, the more obedient you're going to be. And the more blessings you're going to see. Because I believe that God does bless the righteousness of a group. If people are obeying the Lord, God's going to do incredible things among them. But then we know from 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 that the Bible says that God is going to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So what does that teach us? Humility is proportional to obedience. And obedience is proportional to strength. If you want to get stronger, you got to obey the Lord. Trust and obey because that is the only way. That's what made Moses so powerful. You know, there's no great victory without a great struggle. And we know that pain is temporary, but quitting lasts forever. You know, during this time, there could be a pruning of the church where some may want to quit. I want to challenge you. If you you came here this morning and maybe you were counting the cost and saying this might be my last service, just make a decision. Never quit on God. Never quit on God. There's only destruction that's going to happen in your life. God wants to give you blessings. You know, it's been amazing. Your miracles. It's almost over. And now we're on to the year of blessings. And I just think about it, what what a miraculous year it has been. It's been such a joy. And I'm just so happy and proud and honored to be here with you guys in the Metro Coast. And I just think about it this year. One of the things I really treasure in my heart and I'm so grateful for is our partnership with the Rodriguez's. And... Honestly, I couldn't think about any other couple that we will want to preach side-by-side side with. I mean, it's been so fun, side-by-side side preaching with Matthew. And this is awesome because we grew up together spiritually. And in my notes, I have a picture of us at the Winter Workshop in 2019 when he was leading a community college over there in San Francisco and was, you know, not doing so hot um, and was leading the team ministry. And then I was over there at San Jose State with Brianna Lester, actually. And to see what God has done in our lives since then, it's been such a joy. But I know as we can look from this past in Deuteronomy 30, God wants to show us even greater blessings in 2024. And after praying and fasting, we we do have a goal to put before the church in the Metro Coast. I know we want to see astonishing 2024, do we not? I know we want to see amazing blessing in 2024, do we not? I know we want to see God do even greater things in 2024. Here's the goal we want to put before the church. For the Metro Coast to get to 350 disciples. And to see over 150 baptisms over here in the Metro Coast. And what's going to happen? Well, one, we can't meet here anymore. Number two, a lot of us are going to step up in the Lord, just like those who got baptized this year who started discipling people. And a lot of you are answer the call to become Bible talk leaders so we can see more disciples be taken care of and see God do even greater things in the future. Are you guys with me here this morning? It's simple. If we trust and obey, we stay righteous. We do Jesus' ministry. It's inevitable. It will happen. And here's my practical for us. You two make a, make a goal list for yourself. And, and don't wait until January 1st. Start on it now. And, you know, Jason preached a lesson over here a couple weeks ago, our staff, about news resolutions. Why do people don't hit them? Because they're not resolved. If we're resolved to do whatever it takes to hit these goals, we're going to hit them. And that is the heart that we have as disciples. There's nothing we are not willing to do for our God. You know, in the movie, to close, uh, in the movie A Christmas Carol, the last ghost that Scrooge seizes resembles the Grim Reaper. But we have to understand that in a very real way, the real Grim Reaper is Jesus Christ. In Revelation 14, verse 14, the Bible says, As it says, I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, 
and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle, just like the grim reaper, in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. You know, there's many famous Christmas songs. One of the most famous ones is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Now, I never believed in Santa Claus as a kid. I remember I got in trouble for that in elementary school. I, t I told a girl, Santa Claus is not real. I, I, was, I was seven years old. And she started crying. I was like, why are you crying? We're Christians. We don't believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> so Santa Claus ain't never coming to town. But I know who's coming to town. Jesus Christ. And the Bible says before he comes to town, he's going to have a final harvest. Let's imagine this day. We're going to be a part of that harvest. And we're going to be with him in heaven. But before that final harvest, we need a great harvest in the West region. Before that final harvest, we need a great harvest in the Southland region. We need a great harvest in the Metro Coast, and we're going to see even greater things in the year of blessings, and to God be the glory.